Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem subarray sums divisible by k. I want to quickly mention before you even attempt this problem, I would highly recommend solving leak code 560. I do have a pretty decent video on that problem. This problem is a slightly harder variation of it. It uses the core ideas. This one just involves a little bit more math. So the idea is given an integer array of nums. Uh, let's take a look at the first example given. We have an integer array with six numbers and we're given k equal to five. So that's gonna be important. Idea is we want to count the number of non-empty subarrays that have a sum divisible by k. So brute forcing it, how many subarrays does an array have? Roughly n squared, proportional to n squared. We have n subarrays starting with the first element. We have n minus one subarrays starting with the second element, et cetera, et cetera. We could compute the sum of every single subarray. And then we could check if it's divisible by k by modding it by k. And if the result is equal to zero, then we would count this. If it's not, we don't count it. Now, after totaling up the count, we return the count. So pretty simple, right? Can we really do better than an n squared solution? How is that possible? It's because we don't actually have to build the subarrays themselves. We're counting the subarrays. If we had to build every subarray, there's going to be roughly n squared, possibly, like in the worst case. So we wouldn't be able to do better than that. But this time we're counting. We don't have to build them. Therefore, it might be possible that we can actually optimize this solution and we can indeed do that. Again, we're going to use the core ideas from leak code problem 560. But even if you don't know that, let me kind of give you a bit of the intuition hypothetically, if there was a way to optimize it, this is what the train of thought would be. Instead of building every subarray, take a shortcut. Hypothetically do this. Maybe let's consider all subarrays starting at this element. That would be one possible way to do it. Or we could say, let's consider all subarrays ending at this element and then like iterate over the input. It's kind of weird to do it starting at this element. Like how do we, if we're going from left to right, suppose, and we're trying to get all subarray sums divisible by K starting at this element, kind of hard to do that if we haven't even looked at the other elements yet, right? So the train of thought is at this element, let's get all subarray sums ending at this element. It's pretty easy to do for the first case. With just one element, we have the sum itself. It's just four. Is this divisible by k, which in this case is five? Well, we mod it and we don't get zero, we get a remainder of four. So it's not, we don't count it to our result. Our result is still zero. Now let's try the second thing. Now we have this, our total sum so far is nine. And we want to ask the question, what are all subarray sums, count all subarray sums ending at this element and check if they're divisible by K? Well, there's two cases. There's nine, a mod that by five and we get a remainder of four. So that's not it. We could also try five by itself, right? All subarrays ending here include this one, five itself. So five modded by five, gives us a remainder of zero. So in this case, obviously we add one to the result. The result is gonna be one now. So what's the pattern? Well, let's try one more time here. Well, first of all, the sum here is nine. Once again, we try this itself. All subarray sums ending at this element. Nine modded by five is gonna be four. That doesn't work. Okay, try this subarray sum, which is just five. Five modded by five is indeed zero. We counted one more. Now try this subarray sum 
ending at this element just itself, removing these two. We get zero modded by five, which is again zero. So this one actually counts. Like you can see even in the output here, they say the subarray with just zero is technically divisible by K. So that does count, the math works out, great. So, so far we counted two subarray sums ending at this element and we counted one subarray sum ending at this element. Do you notice the pattern? Well, to get potentially all subarray sums ending at this element, we try the whole thing. We try removing this and then we try removing this. Obviously, if we do it manually, it's gonna still be an n squared solution. Is there a shortcut that you notice through all of that? The idea is that for the math to work out, if we're keeping track of the total sum, every time we get to a new element, we're keeping track of the total sum from the beginning up until this point. We're trying to count the subarrays ending at this element. We have our, let's say, current sum or total sum. We want it modded by K to be equal to zero, but we're also allowed to have that sum minus a prefix of the array. And that modded by K can also equal zero. Now, the hard part is that these prefixes could be this or this or this or whatever, right? Any prefix. So obviously we'd have to loop to do that, right? Is there a better way? Of course there is. It's not easy to come up with, but why not solve the mathematical formula for this? What does the prefix have to be such that this equation is true? Well, we kind of saw an example of it earlier. Let's just look at the example. The, let's say the sum here is nine. If we mod this by five, we get a remainder of four. We want a remainder of zero, but we got a remainder of four. So obviously we're trying to remove a remainder of four from the beginning, right? A prefix of four. So the remainder that we got is exactly what we're trying to remove, but it actually works in another case as well. If we take the entire prefix nine itself and take nine minus nine and we remove that, we also then will get a remainder of zero. If we take nine minus four, we get a remainder of zero. And if we do nine minus nine, we get a remainder of zero. So what's the pattern here? What is exactly the prefix that we're trying to remove? It doesn't necessarily have to be the remainder. It's just that the prefix itself needs to have the same remainder. So for example, we have nine here, nine modded by five, which is K is gonna be four. We want to remove any prefix that is equal to four or also has a remainder of four. So a prefix of nine is also what we're trying to remove because nine would also have a remainder of four after modding it by K. So that's the math. I know it's not super intuitive, especially if you haven't solved leak code 560, but if you have, this is a somewhat reasonable problem if you deeply understand that. This one just involves a bit more math here. To summarize everything, we're going to be counting the prefixes, but not based on their sum, but we're gonna be counting the prefixes based on their remainder. So here on the left, I'm gonna have a happy little hash map and it's gonna be called count. You could call it whatever you want. We're gonna have the remainder as the key and the value is gonna be the count. Initially, we're gonna actually have a default value in here. We're gonna say there is a prefix that has a remainder of zero and a count of one. And the reason for that is it'll probably make more sense in the code or I might explain it in a few minutes, but for now, just kind of leave this here. We're gonna keep track of what the current sum is. Starting at the first element, we have four. We're gonna get the remainder of this, modding it by K, we're gonna have a remainder of four. Well, that's not good. We want all the remainders to be zero. This is not. So now we wanna ask, is there a prefix from here that we can remove such that the remainder of this would actually be zero? Well, for us to do that, we have to have a prefix with a remainder of four. We don't have any of those yet. So we can't create a non-empty subarray. Okay, that's fine. But now we're gonna say we've counted one subarray, one prefix that had 
a remainder of four. So we're gonna add the count here. A remainder of four has a count of one. Now we're gonna look at this sum. We're trying to count all subarray sums ending at this element. Right now our sum is nine. Mod this by five, we get a remainder of four. It's not zero, so we check. How many subarray sums did we have with a remainder of four? Because that tells us how many subarray sums we can create here that are gonna be divisible by K. In this case, we had exactly one. That tells us we can remove that one subarray and then the remainder of this would be equal to zero. So we counted one. So now the result is gonna be set to one and we're gonna take this and update our count hash map. We're not gonna say nine is equal to one. We're gonna increment this one. Nine was a sum, a prefix sum. It had a remainder of four. Therefore, we've counted two prefix sums with a remainder of four. So the count now is gonna be two. Now we're gonna look at this. The sum is nine. We mod it by five. We get a remainder of four. So we check, is that in the hash map? Yes, it is. So now the result is gonna be incremented by two. Those subarrays would look like this. This, and of course, this. There were two prefix sums we could remove such that the remainder of the leftover would be four or the leftover uh, would be zero, but those prefix sums would have a remainder of four. And so once again, we counted a prefix with a remainder of four, so this is gonna be incremented by one. So now we've counted three prefix sums with a remainder of four. So now we look at this subarray, total sum is seven, mod that by five, we get a remainder of two. How many subarray sums have we seen with a remainder of two? I don't see any here. We don't add anything to our result. Our result, I believe at this point is gonna be three. We don't do anything with the result, but now we've counted one prefix sum that had a remainder of two. So we can update our hash map with that information. There's one with a remainder of two. So now I'm adding this negative three. I believe we have four. So four modded by five is gonna be equal to four. How many prefix sums did we have with a remainder of four? We counted three exactly. What would those subarrays look like? Well, this has a subarray sum that's divisible by K. Getting rid of this, this also has a subarray sum divisible by K. Negative five is technically divisible by five. And then this one as well. This is a negative five, it's divisible by five. So we've counted those three. So now we're gonna add three to our result. So right now our result would be six. And since we counted one more prefix sum, that is having a remainder of four, we're actually gonna set this now equal to four. We're gonna increment it by one. Now, lastly, here we have a total sum of five and we take this and we divide it by K, we get zero. But the way we're updating our result is not based on this, it's based on how many other prefix sums did we have with the same remainder. And so we counted a single one. And you can think of that as like the empty prefix. Um, technically, with an empty prefix, we remove that empty prefix, we have this array left over. This technically is divisible by K, so now you can kind of see why we initialize it like this because we do still wanna consider that case. It's mainly just to make the math work out and to keep our code relatively clean. There are alternatives to this, but if uh, this didn't make sense, imagine something like this. Imagine we had an array that just has five, we take five modded by K, which is zero, and we'd wanna see that already we have counted a prefix sum with a remainder of zero, which is one, so we'd add one to our result. That's the idea here. In summary, that last one was a single subarray sum, so we had six plus one, the result is seven, and I believe that is the result that we had. And if I go backwards, yep, you can see here, we had seven as the expected output. So that's how we're gonna code this up. Obviously, it's a linear time solution. And you might think that the hash map also is gonna be linear time in the worst case, but actually it's a bit more efficient than that because think about how many possible remainders we could have when we're modding by five. The remainder could only be either zero, one, two, three, or four, right? Zero through K minus one. So the max size of the hash map is actually gonna be 
k. So this is the time complexity, this is the space complexity. Okay, so now coding it up, um, we're gonna keep track of the current sum. I guess I'll call it the prefix sum just to be very clear. Initially, it's gonna be zero. And we're also gonna have our result. That's what we're gonna return. That's the count of the subarray sums divisible by k. And also we're gonna have that hash map. I'm gonna call it prefix count, I guess, but there might be a more descriptive name for it. I'm initially gonna set it to a default dictionary just because that's always nice and I'm gonna initialize it with a single pair mapping zero as the remainder to a count of one. So then we're gonna go through every number in the input. We're always gonna add it to the prefix sum. Then we want to compute the remainder. So let's do that. Remainder is gonna be prefix sum modded by k. Now we wanna know how many prefix sums were having a remainder of exactly this because with those we're going to add them to the result so you could do it like this if remainder is in prefix count then add to the result the amount that we counted so prefix count with this remainder add that to the result and also after we're done with that let's update the prefix count by adding one more of the current remainder to it. So this is exactly what I talked about in the drawing explanation. Now it's not easy to come up with, I admit, but this is the code. We could make it slightly more concise with a default dictionary. If a key doesn't exist, this will evaluate to zero. We won't get like a key out of bounds error or key doesn't exist error. So we can actually move this outside of the condition and get rid of the condition if you really want to. It's not like a major optimization or anything, but that's kind of the power of a default dictionary. So this is the code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. It's about as efficient as we can get it. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.